hello and welcome back to this museum where today you guys are up on the Schmez and I'm down here amongst all of the Schmemobiles. It's a good job I'm not afraid of heights, right? <laughs> Probably. It's quite, it's quite high up. Hopefully the guys aren't afraid of heights. I mean, it is about three meters high from where you are near a four. So you've got quite the view from up there. It does, yeah. Literally, I get a good view of everything. Yeah. The Schmini, that thing which According to the comments, we need to stop saying it's really bright because they can see it's really bright. To be fair, I actually love one of the comments in our latest, or sorry, latest museum video with it, where they were saying that when Tim's hand was moving over the bonnet of the car, you could see the pixelation where the camera just didn't know what to do. Yeah. And I hadn't actually noticed that and had to watch it back and realized they were 100% right. That, and that's proof the camera just cannot appreciate this color. Anyway, I think we should probably get on to explaining what we're up to today because we we've should. talked about this too much and we're probably going to be seeing this again later on. Yes, and there is going to be some orange in today's video, but today is quite a sad day as we're saying goodbye to one of the cars from here. Now, of course, Tim isn't here, so I'm sure you can guess it's not one of the Schmemobiles, but today we are losing our long-termer Audi RS3 saloon. And <laughs> if only you could see Brad's face right now, you're going to be really upset because it's I think you've, face. you've really fell in love with that car. It's one of those cars that you can just get in and drive. It's fun, it's quick, comfortable. Like as an everyday car with power, that almost ticks every single box, I think. It really does. And again, going back to the video we did where we took it out and just kind of said some positives and negatives about it. And the positives definitely outweigh the couple small, you know, points you could you could say. But I think yeah. the, I think the negatives are just more like personal things, things that they we are. like as drivers ourselves, things that we like or dislike just based on our own choices. And again, a lot of mine was like aesthetics, like the sunroof. But ultimately, that doesn't detract from the way it gets down a road, which, as I said, is fantastic. The quality, of the damping is amazing. That five cylinder. Oh is absolutely phenomenal as well. And when it comes on boost, there's not much like it, to be honest. So obviously you mentioned there's gonna be some orange in the video, that's not orange. But if no. we're talking about four wheel drive, I mean, yes, it's a saloon, but hot hatches, cause you can get a hot hatch. Correct. We have a four wheel drive hot hatch above it. And I believe that's the second weapon of choice to get us home. Cause I'm gonna drive yes. this, you're gonna bring that. I am because- we have a few errands to run on the way. We do, we have some missions, so. What we're going to do is we're going to jump in the RS3. Well, Brad's going to jump in the RS3. I'm going to jump in the Focus, which I'm sure is going to be a very fun journey on the way there, given that 400 horsepower, 375. DC, damp out. DSG, like... manual. Could be quite interesting on the way. Um, but then once we've said goodbye to the Audi, we're going to be heading back over to TDF as they have taken the tires off of the wheels once again. And we're going to be running those over to the guys at Whoop so they can do the other three after they did a test wheel for us a while back. Then we're going to be heading down to see the guys at Dub to take over the steering wheel because Dub actually have a trimming element to the entire business where they can retrim steering wheels, seats, dashboards, door cards, whatever you want really. So we're going to be taking that over to get that refreshed because well, after many years of people jumping in and out as a simulator, not in the best of shapes. So I think without further ado, cold starts. All right, well, I guess you should jump in the RS3 yeah. and let's get this started. I can't do that yet. I may have forgotten to bring the key from the office. So I'm gonna go get that. <sighs> have you even got the focus key? Brad, it's too soon. Have you got the focus key? Yes. Okay. It's too soon to do one of that, you know, but oh. you're making it almost no, necessary. No, we, we won't do one. I'll be back though, I'll be back. Just look at something over there. And now that Brad has moved the RS3 out of the way, it's time to turn our Benpack auto stacker on. There we go, we have cleared the locks and time for this to come down. I don't know if the guys have ever seen it from this, from this view, probably. from this angle. I, I, you probably have, but I feel like I'm not helping much. I'm just kind of over here watching. Yeah. I'm supervising, that's it, I'm supervising. Yeah. Well, that's coming down nicely. Are we going to keep waiting? Do we? It's up to you in the edit. I mean, at this point now we're talking, we're definitely waiting. It's almost yeah. down, look. And there we go. That is down 
on the floor and then we switch that one off, hit the emergency stop. I love these lifts. They're just so, they're really quiet. They are, they're know, fantastic. We've we definitely said it before, but they're so quiet, quick and easy to use. Like. And so many people have commented on just how quiet they are exactly. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna come over this way and what I'm gonna do gonna, is I'm gonna, gonna swap. hand you a camera, sir. Thank you. And see, this is what happens when you remember a key yep. right there when you need it. I'm just gonna pop the door here, which again, opens plenty of gap, no risk of any damage. And I'm just gonna grab the bonnet. Oh no, this is where, can I find it this time? <laughs> It is a little bit awkward on this one, if I'm being completely honest. Ooh. Oh, there it is. Oh, but we've got it. Got it. Okay, there we go. And we can just take off the SeaTech Smart Charger. If you could yep, hold that one for me, that would be quite useful. Quite a heavy bonnet. It is, actually. But there we go. That's that one off. And now I guess it's nice. time for another cold start. Yep, let me come around the back, you jump in, and then we will pull it off of the lift. And just like that, cars are out, ready to go. I guess you need a bag, I need my bag with bits in it, and then we should probably... Hit the road? Get on the road, but this... It's the last time that's ever gonna leave I this know. museum. It's kind of like... We're gonna have to chat about this. Maybe I'll stick a camera in the car on the way up and just chat about some of the experiences we've had. Like, for me, I flew out to Germany and brought that home with Tim. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, the whole like, journey started right there for you. It's, and not, it's not every day that you, you get to do that, so no, yeah, and very I, lucky to have been able to. I literally trip. remember you guys coming back about 10, 11 o'clock at night, and I just grabbed the keys and went for my first run out on its winter tyres. And Oh, yeah, we had the winters on. There's yeah. so many memories with this car, which is cool, but like, luckily, because of this, we well, there's a little light dance yeah so, that's the um, light show that everything that we do is captured like photos videos we're always taking a photo or video of this car yeah it's nice to be able to go back but yeah some of the memories and some of the things that it's done right through from the team trips as intended through to just running home and back in it and everything in between it's like you said it's it there's nothing that that flummoxes it there's no situation you can put it in whether it's a practicality situation carrying people coming up against anything at the traffic lights. It just does everything. Right. Anyway, without- Any more yeah, waffle? Yeah. More waffle, we should jump on the road and get this back to Audi. You join us out on the road. Um, I'm in the RS3 and just over my right shoulder is Tom in the Focus. I only have one camera. I'm not as prepared as Tim, so I've got one action cam, which is faced at me currently. But there is the Focus RS. That sounds good. Let me pop this into individual. So dynamic, everything essentially apart from suspension and steering. Uh, steering actually I might put in, I can't remember. Just get some of that five pot. We've said it many times, but such a lovely engine. It sounds so good. I also hope you can hear me because we're using the action cams mic. So who knows, should work fine. Um, yes, yeah, smooth sailing. So one thing we've realized as well, and we both said this earlier on, Seeing the Focus outside without the Lotus being anywhere near, that colour is lovely. You can actually see a bright orange. It doesn't look is very that a Is that a Supra? Ah, we have a Supra. Thanks, Tom. Um, I can't show you it, but there is a Mark V Supra. I think I need to stop waffling because this is going to be a nice boring clip of my face for over long. So let's crack on and head over to Audi to drop back the RS3. Here comes said Supra, just over my right shoulder again. It's about the only way you can actually see it. There it is. I really like them. They've grown on me a lot. I've got a few friends that have them. Very cool cars, but yeah, let's keep going. Just like that, we have now made the journey with the RS3. It's a sad day. It is sad. It's, the mood has all of a sudden changed knowing that that's it's gone. It's, it's, it's become like a Schmimobile. It has, we've had it for about six months, and if we come inside, just to double check the mileage, we've actually just made sure we've cleared out everything so we don't, you know, leave anything. But we are on 9,995 miles. We collected the car in Munich on 2,295, so we've done exactly 7,700 miles in the RS3 from Munich down to Italy for Finale Mondiale, uh, myself yeah. and Tim, and then back up obviously through France. We went past Bugatti, 
all the way back to this museum where you got behind the wheel and then since there we've just used it for pretty much everything and anything. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that it's had well, probably a couple of years worth of use within those 7,700 miles in the last six months and it stood the test perfectly well. I mean, the one thing we can say, it hasn't gone wrong. No error lights, no warnings, no failures, no, no nothing of, of anything. All we've had. No nothing of anything, that makes absolutely no sense. But, it, doesn't, but... It, it hasn't gone wrong or put a foot wrong in any way, shape or form other than when you got a puncher, but that was simply because you run yeah, over a when neck. when I got a puncher, yeah. As in when we came in one morning after I'd been driving it and there was a puncher in the tire, yeah. So yeah. you got a puncher? Maybe. Yes. And that's the only thing, and that obviously is something that can happen to any car. Yeah, that's, other that's than that, not anything against the car, that's just one of those things. Yeah. It's been faultless. It's literally done everything so, so well. So I guess Audi probably want their car back. Um, we're just around the corner, so we should probably I think go they and do. drop this back in. Yeah, I'm going to miss it. And yeah, I guess uh, we're well, into the Mini for you. Yeah, into the Mini and the buff. I'll stick with the Focus for now. Yeah, you can keep that. Just park there behind us. But yeah, let's go drop this off and then we need to head to TDF and collect some F1 bits. We do. Goodbye, RS3. This is literally it. Um, it turns out we went to the wrong place. Um, we did. And the car is now not on 9,995 miles. It's on 10,001 miles. So, yeah. But it's now been dropped off. Yeah. Um, goodbye, RS3. Hello, Focus RS. I haven't been in this in a while. The, I mean, it no, was, I, it I, was haven't, I haven't been in it in a while either. I've, I've, you know, apart from today. We're back on this lovely road where we uh, actually interrupted our friend's photo shoot. So when there was the MG GT M3 and what was the other car? GT4. GT4. How could I not remember yeah. that? They were parked up, I think, roughly here, and we drove past and interrupted. Uh, they shoot, which... Yeah, so apologies to Supercars of Bedfordshire, if you don't yeah. already follow it. Lewis, sorry. Go and have a look on Instagram, but yes, apologies. Anyway, um, oh, that is a lovely view. It is, it's that just such a there. wonderful place here. We are back at TDF, and our wheels are here and have been demounted. I've just kind of flattened that tyre a little bit, but... What have you done? <laughs> it's, it's fine. It's actually amazing getting the other three wheels off the tyres now. No, wait, tyres off the wheels. Tyres off the wheels, You yeah. know what I mean. So, this one here... So, it's has... all about the history, isn't it? So, obviously, yes. this one had some history. It was used for some testing. It was used at a test at Ricard. Um, so, that was really cool. This one here doesn't have much on it, but we can see that it went through a non-destructive test and it was okay in the year 2000. But, crucially, Mendel show car, which is exactly what we believed our car to be, was one of the show cars produced by Harry Mendel back in the day. And that kind of confirms it. This one here is really cool. Go. Thank you very much, because we can see here, this one had some stone damage. And as the guys here at TDF explained, as soon as a wheel generally got any amount of damage, that was it. It was put out one. and used for other purposes, Two such as oh, show also cars. Also had a Ricard test too. Also had a Ricard test. They're It'll quite be, dirty. We'll have to get the photos up, but we took and see if it's a similar date or yeah. at the same time. I believe it was also 98, so quite possibly around the same time. And then the last one here this is a has, has revealed quite a funny bit of history. Now, I don't know if you can spot anything going on here. don't know if you can spot what you mean, the big like welding yeah so thing. clearly here at some point this wheel has split or maybe it was two halves of two wheels Cracked, and they've been put split, together like that. and has been welded but do you know what that's actually right. a really good job and this one was a 97 that was wheel. a 97 wheel nothing else on that one oh, but again all come from There's williams something. wait what oh, is this museum ah museum interesting i think they missed the sh but other than that they got all of that very correct so We'll pop that one back there for now. I think I'm going to now go and wash my hands. Not yet, you're oh, not. No, you're right, because we've got some other bits. So and also, again, you can put these in the car and then wash hands after. That's probably a good idea. <laughs> we, have all but of also, the, we have all the body parts still from the car, but we also have this. So this is here now already, because the guys at TDF have been working, getting a bit of wind noise from the shutter. The guys have been working on obviously getting a steering column in place so that we are able to turn this and change it from the simulator setup that it was. So as we said, this is going over to the boys at Dub. I mean, you can see how horrible and massive it's... that's gone and 
Yeah. It should look more like that there, and even that's not really nice. And this no. is just, this almost looked like leather. Right, first things first, open up the front. Comes in straight at it, two wheels. I'm gonna pop this down here with me in the front. Fast forward a bit, we have... Fast forward? Fast, fast okay. forward. You call this fast? Slow forward, we have left TDF. We have obviously a boot full of, oh, that's quite a cool shot, actually. F1 stuff, wheels, etc. But we have traffic. We're trying to get to whoops. We've been sitting in the traffic for way too long. And I mean, our ETA, if I just zoom in here, our ETA was about 1724. Yeah, 1724. We're now at 1752. So we're like almost 53. Half a, there we go, it's going up. We're like half an hour already later than we were expecting. And there's just traffic literally everywhere for whatever reason. We're going slow. It's not fun. We will catch up with you once we are at whoops. Um, because there's not much else to show you other than just the say out Alhambra in front uh, as we see in traffic. So yeah, we'll catch up very soon. Slow forward again. We've actually got moving to be fair. We are arriving at one of our favorite place. Whoops, we'll fix it. I haven't been here in a while. No, Good the lads were back. asking after you yesterday. Oh. Hello, here they are. speaking of the lads, You're how right. are you doing? Yeah, good, mate. We got some wheels for you, so we'll park up and get them unloaded. Inside, at Woods, we'll fix it. We have one, two, three, and four Formula One wheels. Um, so, these are being dropped off, ready to be transformed. Let me just come and grab this one. Looking really, really nice with obviously the refurb that the guys have done for us already. Back with a tyre on. This is how these three will end up looking. So yeah, we'll leave these here and then probably in a couple of weeks we'll come back and collect them and obviously we can get them back to TDF, back onto the tyres and there will be obviously more updates on the Formula One cars. It's really interesting just seeing the sort of different designs and how the dish is uh, for the rear is obviously a lot more than the front. Yeah, really cool. So that's the finished product. These are now ready to go. We need to go and jump back into the Focus, head back to the Museum, jump into the Lotus and then we are heading to Dub Customs to drop off the steering wheel. So let's get back on the road. We're back at the museum and we have the Lotus ready. Focus is back on the auto stacker. Now I probably should point out we haven't denied you a cold start no matter how it looks. Given this thing is featherweight, I've simply unplugged the C-Tech and pushed it forward ready for a cold start. So it will come. So that goes in there. That goes in there. Um, I just wanted, I wanted to do this specifically on video to show just how much this can take. Yeah, you sort of have to, because it just disappears like it, behind it here. It does, this is what you don't realise, it's far yours, bigger. We have a bit of a cable hanging down. That's, that's fine. fine, we'll tuck that in out there of the way. There we go. And that will slot into that sort of other corner, so. That literally, there you go, look, that's There's surprisingly a lot of room in this. It really is. And you could still put like another one of your rucksacks in there just squished in a bit. And to be fair, I could get yours over a bit further if I was to move it around because the battery cup is just there. But if that's I was nuts. to, if I was to adjust that a bit, we'd get yours a bit further in, probably another one there, another one there. So good four bags that will go yeah. in here, which. Shame there's only two people you can have in the car, but yeah, for traveling say, with, for, for traveling with the car, it's probably not that bad. For anywhere you're realistically going to go or anything you're going to need, four bags is enough, right? Anyway, there we go, we get that one closed. Now we haven't told the guys at Dub what we're coming with, so we've decided, as Brad has mentioned, we're gonna take the Elise because they deal with lots of very, very different, interesting colours doing what they do wrapping vehicles, from pearls to chromes to who knows what kind of crazy things are coming out these days, but I'm guessing they've never seen anything like this. Hence um, why we're jumping in this and gonna run over there with this. Yeah, I'm sure there's some like fluoro wraps you can get, but fluoro paint, 14 layers, this is different. Oh yes, so I think it's time for that cold start. <laughs> We're not actually too cramped, which is nice. No, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm not the smallest of chaps, and I kind of expected me and you in here together. Well, I expected you to be sat on my lap, basically. But you know what? It, I'm glad we're not. Once you're in, this thing is perfectly fine. The gap to get in and out is quite small, so getting in and out, especially for someone like me, is a bit of a struggle. However, once you're in, it's cozy. It's absolutely it's nice. fine. Right, time to show the guys this 
So Dan is coming out. It's where is it? Right, they're on the way. Where is it? Wow. <laughs> We've got a wrap colour like that. You have? Yeah. I see, I yeah. said I bet you haven't, but... All, of the, all the flies are just going to go straight to it, aren't they? That's Hope. bold, isn't it? It is. So it's uh, Raoul 2005. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Thought we'd bring it down I'm and... get uh, the wrap colour and put it up next Okay, to it that'll see. be really cool. Yeah. So we'll have a look at the nearest wrap colour that they've got. And this is why we come to Dub, right? They've got everything on hand. And we'll see how far away it is. So how far could you take a normal car in terms of being close to this colour? So I have in my hand the sample from the guys at Dub. And this kind of shows exactly what we're saying about this car. So in isolation, Dan's obviously gone, we've got a wrap colour that's very similar because on its own, it's a very bright, bold colour. However, next to this, we're back to brown. Oh, wow, camera's even different. <laughs> the, the camera is even different from looking at it like with my eyes. Yeah. You it's, can still see the difference. So it's again, this, like... is, this is traditionally a very out there colour and it hopefully goes to show just how crazy this thing is. But you have something in your hand which the wheel. is our steering wheel, which we can finally get this retrim thanks to the guys at Dub here and their trimming side of the business and uh, get this looking back to the way it should. So we're going to hand this over, jump back in the Elise and head over to the museum for what is turning out to be another late night. Right, I think now is the time we go and find some food. So, Nando's? Sounds like cheeky Nando's time. We're obviously getting Nando's, back to the museum and then I think we'll probably end up so, oh, we need fuel as well. Actually. We do need fuel, yeah. yeah Which will be its first lights. ever fill up. So, and so far, I mean, the fuel light has just gone red, or the fuel gauge has just gone red. But so far, we're on 290 miles on a fill, which I mean, maybe we shouldn't be impressed. I think that's really quite remarkable. Obviously, we don't yet know the size of the tank, but I can't imagine it's particularly huge. So, so far, I'm very impressed. Over 300 miles of tank. Back on the road in Firefly, is this what we're calling it? Firefly, yeah, I think the, the owner has called it the Little Firefly and do you know what? I think that name really suits the car and works really rather well. We can kind of still see you, which I think is because of how bright the, like, <laughs> these parts of the door here are. I'm, I'm reflecting off of the uh, the internal painting yeah, parts. Yeah, and the, sure. the only light in here is behind us, there's none like up by the mirror, so yeah, we are filled up. Um, I think we did, we've done about 295 miles on one tank. Yes, obviously it's been yep. driven easily while it's being run in, but still pretty impressive. Yeah, very impressive. Um, it's, I just can't wait for that run-in service to be done because you just get the sensation that this thing just wants to be pushed and pushed and pushed and just driving it, as I said, the, all of the control weights, you know, like just changing gear is such a pleasurable experience. It, oh, this is a proper driver's car. And again, Lotus is saying is for the drivers. And do you know what? I completely get it. This thing is brilliant. And we may have to talk about not giving it back because I quite like this. Right. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, <laughs> we lost focus somehow, again, out the side, but... It probably caught a glimpse of orange. Maybe. I don't know what to do. Yeah, it looks quite pretty though. Um, anyway, we're gonna head back to the garage, back to base, get this parked up, and I guess head home, seeing as we're now having a late night at this museum when we do get back, because it's already 20 past nine. I was about to say 8.20 then, but clearly the clock just hasn't yeah. been updated. 9.20 p.m. Yeah. So, oh, so, yeah, let's hopefully have a nice smooth sailing journey back home. Just like that, we have made it back. We've actually fast forwarded through time this time, which makes no sense. But yeah, we weren't caught in traffic, which is good. We had a smoother journey and I can't believe how much I fell in love with this little thing. I mean, it shouldn't be a surprise, right? This is, Lotus is saying, as we said, is for the drivers, you know, add lightness and simplify. We are all very aware of the famous sayings that go along with them, but you know, I think to have not driven one before is almost criminal. To call yourself a petrol head, a car enthusiast, and to have not driven a Lotus, especially an Elise, yeah, that needed to be changed, and I'm glad it has, because it's absolutely brilliant, and well, I can't believe what I was missing out on. But anyway, more importantly, we're not here actually to talk about the Elise. We're here to talk about the loss of our Audi RS3 long-termer, which it's is a sad day. It's a very sad day. But we've had some amazing memories. So first of all, thank you to Audi UK for lending us it. Huge for thank you to you guys. Six, seven months. We've done almost 8,000 miles in the car and 
they have been flawless. They have, and they've been in a number of situations. I mean, you and Tim had it out in the snow, in the mountains. It's been here doing team trips. It's gone out with family. It's, there's nothing it hasn't been able to do. There was never once a situation where we took the car, got to the other end or got to what we were doing and went, we should have brought another car. You know, which does happen with some of these, let's be honest. But with that, it, it was just always there. The tank range is amazing. The comfort was amazing. The stereo. It's, it's, I can't think of anything better, really, just to cruise around in day to day. It's literally everything you could want from a car. And I guess the question now is, what do we replace it with? Obviously, we have the Mini Electric, but it's... I don't think we'd want to put four or five of us in that, if no. we're honest. And if we have a journey of more than, well, a, a theoretical range of 140 miles, so if we have to go anywhere further than 70, that could then be a problem getting back. So, yeah, yeah we are going to have to focus on that one at some point. But it was obviously great afterwards to get out on the road run some errands it's in relation to our formula one car get the wheels over to the guys at whoops and get those sorted and then obviously the steering wheel over to dub because with their new arm of the business which has actually been running for quite a while now we just haven't had a need to utilize it but with that new arm of the business they're able to retrim steering wheels dashboards door cards seats whatever you could potentially need so it's been lovely to be able to drop that off and knowing that that is going to look a lot nicer once we get it back. Yeah, we've had, I guess in, in general, we've had a really good day. It's been a long one. We it's have. now pretty much exactly half 10 at night, 10.30 p.m. So another late night here at this museum. It is. And on that note, I think it's probably home time. So we should stop waffling, park this back up and plug the C-Tech in. And well, I guess until next time.